Frenchie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good. Frenchie. Guys, welcome to the second installment of Soka City Sounds. I am here with the ever mighty Endast. Guys, introduce yourselves if you don't mind. Uh, I'm Pepe, I'm a guitar player. James, Big James, I sing. Chris, guitar. Steve, the drummer. Sometimes. No, I'm Ryan Miller, I play bass guitar. Just I, Ryan Miller, that's all we need. Just, just Ryan Miller. Miller. Ryan. Ryan Miller. So, uh, it's no secret that uh, tonight is the last end of show ever. Um, you guys played Montreal and Ajax. How did those two shows treat you? Uh, it's pretty emotional, I think, you know. A lot of really, really old friends and supporters of the band coming out. A lot of fans have been with us for like the past 10 years, coming out to the shows. And, you know, it's uh, a lot of old faces, but some new faces too. Like, we're people who've never seen this before, but they just wanted to get get their chance in. Which is kind of nice, you know? It's a good feeling. Awesome. So it's been emotional, but fun. Good, good. Uh, as, long as, it, as long as it's all fun. Yeah. Uh, now, 11 years, right? Am I correct? Yep. Uh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, looking back on the last 11 years, um, what goes through your head? Like, what runs through the mind of an NDAS member when you look back on the last 11 years of it all? It's a like lot. remember. We were talking about this the other night. Yeah. It's just this, you know, you, you remember, you look back and you remember one thing and then it it's just brings you to another memory. Like, me and Miller were talking last night. It's just one thing after another. It's just, you know, been through so much together. It's crazy. It's actually like, it's crazy how much yeah, we've been. Yeah, like one memory, like conversation will segue to another thing that you totally forgot about, and then before you know it, you're you're not even talking about right. the initial story, right? right? Like the initial memory, man. Right? There's so much, <coughs> so much. Well, we from a family. That's what happens. It just, like now, it's like it's no longer just being like in a band. We've been together for so long. It's like it's, it's brotherhood. Yeah. And I mean, even Steve, who's only been with us for a year, yeah. which is unfortunate because I wish I could have shared some of those other memories, but even just in the past year, so many stories, you know, sure, like, yeah. and, he, you know, immediately became part of the family, like, you know. I was saying to him last night as well, like, you know, it's a shame that it's, yeah. you know, we came to this and now it's done and, like, just, yeah. It's been one year from uh, my first show with Go. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. One year. Exactly. One year. No shit. Sure. Sure. No shit. Sure. No shit. Sure. No sure. no sure. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> cool, but sad. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So, if I'm not mistaken, Endas translated means endure. Yeah, endure. Yeah. I, and even based on what was just said, that's that's pretty fitting for, for you guys as a band title. Because um, you have been through it all. What are some of the highs and some of the lows? More so the highs, if you know, if you don't want to get into the lows, I don't know. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you know? <laughs> Last night. Yeah. 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 Honestly, yeah the past, the past couple of weeks, these, these last shows have been like just really some of the high points of my career as a musician. But you know, we played you know with some of our peers that you know when we were kids were you know in our mind like idols. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That now you, we, we play the same stage as some really incredible bands that like we grew up listening to, and that's like a huge accomplishment. You know. For an unsigned, in a completely independent since day one act, we've accomplished a lot of really cool shit. Awesome. Uh, that's one thing. One of the things I wanted to ask you guys too. How important has it been over the last 11 years to remain independent, sort of, you know, true to what you guys want to do? You're not, you're not gonna fall to any label. Um, you, you've had, you guys have had offers from labels, from what I understand. Yep. How important is that to stay independent as opposed to signing on with uh, the label wagon? Well, it seemed a lot more important a long time ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it just, like, there was, it, honestly, like I said, there's a sense of pride in everything we've accomplished, you know, as independent actors. We did it all ourselves. It's like hard work, and, you know, we, you know, we're one of these bands that, like, our work ethic can't be fucked with. You know, mm -hmm. like, we drive, play, we drive, we play, we drive, we play, we do it more than most bands our size and you know it's there's a sense of pride in, in knowing that we did that all ourselves we book our own shows you know we, we do everything ourselves so but as you get older you also realize you know the, I think in hindsight you know having put ourselves out there as a 100% independent act and proud of the fact might have limited us in other ways business wise like it might have closed some doors for us I mean, who knows? It's all speculation. For but sure. 
you know, we were talking about this a lot in the past in the past couple of days as well. Maybe, you know, we hit the ceiling we hit uh, because we exhausted our we, own efforts. Like, yeah, you know, like who knows, you know. Also, there's a lot of things that change in ten years. Like when we started, like like bands were getting signed everywhere. Like a lot of bands in Montreal got signed like ten years ago. Like, by Tycon and Massacre and all that. Right. So we're like, let's let's get on that boat too, like because we like they're playing everywhere, like in the world. So that's what we wanted. But then, like after a few years, like it doesn't matter if you're signed or not. If you want to do it, you can do it. Like yeah. with everything, with like Facebook, even like we, like James booked the first tour with MySpace and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's like it's yep. easier this way, like for us, like as a band. Like, do it. Totally. Right. Um. So going off of that, then um, you guys have been around since before Facebook was kind of the epicenter of promotions and getting your name out there. How do you think social media has impacted um, the independent music scene, um, just as a whole? Have, have you noticed any great changes because of that we could blame on or give well, credit I think to? Yeah, we're, we're we're of the generation, like we're of the social media generation. You know what I mean, like. Like Pepe was saying, we started booking with MySpace. Like we benefited from all the social media aspect of this. We wouldn't have been able to do a fraction of the things we've done without it. You know, so I mean, it allows us to be able to do this thing, and us and other people our age, you know, who are out there doing this shit. You know, it allows us to be able to do that. You know, and whereas before, I man, I don't know how they used to do it. We need phone call. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, you know what I mean? How do you find write letters? Yeah, like trying we, to find I, a venue like in Calgary, just call. Hey, you guys like book metal shows? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember the first tour I did. I mean, we, we didn't have a GPS. We rocked that shit with MapQuest. Yeah, and I thought MapQuest was like a miraculous yeah. invention. Yeah, you know, I mean, I could just print out step by step instructions on how to get to this place, and it's like it seems so amazing. You know yeah. what I mean? Now it's like, fuck, who do got the GPS? Yeah. Yep. Can you imagine it before in? MapQuest. Like, yeah. like, all the little little map, map across the windshield yeah, and yeah, fuck totally. you across the goddamn yeah. van. Man, I imagine there to be a lot more uh, argumentative states. Yeah. You know, yeah. trying to get around yeah. like that. And then yeah. three guys all looking at the same map. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Driving like four That's hours. That's what you do. Yeah. Opposite way. Everybody's yeah. upside down and <laughs> rotating the maps. Who's your problem? There's your problem. Johnson rides all <laughs> What's What's a Johnson ride? Ah, it's underneath <laughs> where you put the headlight fluid in. It's headlight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Miller, you're still riding from last night, ain't you, bud? Ah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miller's always right. Yeah, right now. <laughs> okay, uh, you know me. I do know you very well. Uh, actually, we uh, just had had a hell of a conversation at Metal Fest a couple of years. Sorry, so feel bad for you. <laughs> Surprisingly, I didn't get offended, and neither did Miller. So it all yeah. worked out. Yeah, we're here now. Yep, we told each other to fuck off a couple times, and it all went well. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, for me, uh, a big part of music, especially heavy music, is the relatability of it, and how I can take a song and apply it to what's going through my head at that time. And one of the one of the end death songs that comes to my head uh, automatically is Confessions. The only guy that likes that song. <laughs> I fucking love Confessions. No, thank you, man. Um, that actually got me through a little bit of bullshit. Uh, you know, just crank it on in the car as loud as I can and chill out to it. Um, where did that Where did that come from? What kind of place did the words for that come from? Man, it's uh, it's just about except like owning who I am. You know what I mean? Like, it was about, it was my opportunity to like, and the guys really let me indulge, you know what I mean? In that, it's just me being able to put myself out there in as honest a way as possible. And I felt that that was important for me. And the guys were like, yeah, do it, man. Yeah. They didn't question the, the nature. It's so different from all the other stuff we've done. Absolutely. And they didn't question it at all. They just ran with it and they supported me on it. And it was awesome, you know what I mean? Beautiful. I mean, it's one of my favorite tracks just because it's like, as honest and raw as it gets for me. Yeah. But, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, you're like the first person to ever bring it up, to be honest with you. I love it. I love it. It's one of the most brutally honest pieces of music I've, I've heard in a real long time. Thank you. Um, I got the Black Cloud album and listened to it full through. And it come on and I was like, okay, you know, a little melodic instrumental piece. And then you started spitting these words out. And I was like, fuck. 
that's that's as true as it gets. Thank you. You know, um, yeah, it, it's great. Thank you. Um, on the Thrive album, there's a song called Ocean of Regret. You guys got Bjorn Strit to sing on that track. How did that whole thing come about? For anybody who doesn't know, Bjorn Strit front, Bjorn Strit, <laughs> Bjorn Strit front soil work. Um, how did that all come about? Chris, you want to um, Well, basically, John Howard from Threat Signal, uh, he has a studio, and he had mentioned like he wanted to get us in for the next record, and we were like pretty enthusiastic about working with somebody different and, and John being a good friend of ours it was like we were totally down and then the opportunity came where like Bjorn was living in Canada uh, living in Toronto and uh, he was like producing records here or there and like he was, he's close friends with John and John's like dude we, we can get Bjorn in on this too and we were like well, for me, Soul has always been one of my all-time favorite metal bands. Yeah. Like, they're a huge influence, and to be able to like do that was a huge thing for us. And like, it was a learning experience. There's like things on that album that we've done that we never thought we could do, and just they, it was really cool to be able to spend two weeks with that guy, and pick his brain just about the music business. And, Get his input on yeah, songs like, too, right? To just to have a beer with him too, like after yeah. after a session, like to go out and have a pint and just like talk to him, like it was a really cool experience for all of us. I was, I'm really grateful that he decided to like live in Canada. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> sure. Because uh, you know, like I never, I never would have thought I'd be able to do that. You know, him being in Sweden, that was never an idea in my head. Right. And when we asked some people wanted to sing on one of the tunes, he's like, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To watch that go down, <laughs> but it was it, it was a it was a hard thing to just keep cool and watch it happen. You know, watch yeah, it. I mean, it's like you've been you know we've been listening to this band for a long time, and like for him to you know want to sing my words on our song, you know what I mean? Like it's a huge thing, you know. So it was very very flattering, and it was like a it's like a bucket list thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I noticed too that uh, album to album, you guys don't stick to the exact same formula like uh, Slayer does. They don't stray far from their path. You guys, you guys experiment um, just with different different ideas. It seems. Um, how important is it that you know you don't get sucked into the same mold for the for the last eleven years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, we also like like the last album was written by everybody, like everybody put a little bit of himself in, in the album and we all listen to so many kind of music and different style and different like bands every every time so we, it, there's always like new stuff that we were like I want to do something like that and so every time I, it, it would be another different kind of album if we, we would have another album right. everything changed every year. Yeah. So. But at the same time I still feel like you, you know it's end up so you turn it on. You know? mm -hmm. It's like it does, every every album is very different. And if you go back, you know, to the beginning, it's a completely different band. It, feels, it sounds like a completely different band. But I mean, it, I think you can always tell that it's us. Yeah, that's, that's something I, I always worry about when writing a new record. I'm like, oh, I don't want it, like, I want it to sound like us. Like, I want to do something different, but I also don't want, like, I don't want people to put the record on for the first time and be like, whoa, yeah. like, this is not the band that I like. This is something that, you know, like, I want to do, Try new things, but still, like I wanted to have our sound. Right. I'm always paranoid that it's not that it's going to be too different, but it never ends up being too different. Like I, I think, like it always works out in the end. You know? Especially the last record, having like, Pepe write some riffs and Miller write some riffs. Everybody took a, a bigger part in the writing process on, on Thrive, and like it's really cool, you know, to have that. It's a great album. It really, is a good album. Um, so. You guys have you guys have seen your fair share of members come and go over the years. Am I would I be accurate in yes, saying that? One or two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think at one time you said you had the drummer from the Agonist. Yeah. 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 Um, so we'll fast forward a little bit. Um, what kind of impact did uh, Blair leaving the band um, when he did? What kind of impact did that have on Endast? You know, it, looking back, it feels seamless. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, for sure. he, you know, he was turning a different page in his life, starting a family, so on. 
and I mean, we, as our friend, we just wanted to support him, and you know, we, there's no ill will there. We were just like, yeah, man, like, what do we have to do? We're like, we tour too much for you to be a dad, you know what I mean? Like, and, and you, you don't want to be like a, you know, absentee parent, you know what I mean? Right. So, he did what he had to do, and we lucked out so hard when we met Steve. We had some mutual friends, uh, you know, he was living in Belgium, and uh, we started communicating before he moved to Canada, and uh, as soon as he got here, you know, he knew a bunch of songs front to back. Nice. It blew our mind right away, and I mean, just like I said, you know, immediately part of the family. Like, we had the same sense of humor, you know, <laughs> like to party the same way, you know, it's like, we just had a great time right away. So you just click immediately, like, well, this is, this is it. We only auditioned one guy. You know what I mean? No, two guys. Uh-oh. Good. Yeah, the other ones are, we can edit that. Yeah, I couldn't make it. <laughs> so then, that being said, um, it Steve, it was obviously a, a, a seamless transition for you to jump into end and just just go at it full board. Um, did you find it difficult at all? Uh, how was that for you coming into a brand new band? Well, actually, it was not that difficult, you know, because uh, the guys are all awesome. You know, nice, and that was really easy. You know, to be in the band, I felt like in, my, in the family mm. yes, right away. And um, it was difficult for me um, because I didn't play uh, metal before. Okay. So I was quite more rock and roll, hardcore. Right. So um, yeah, had to to practice. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. an interesting fact is that he auditioned before his drums even arrived in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> And he didn't have a chance to actually physically play the songs before showing up to the audition. He would just drum on his desk in his apartment. And he's like, he's like, I think I can play like a few of the songs. <laughs> so he came in and he used Blair's kit and just destroyed. We're like, you haven't played these songs yet? Like <laughs> And he just did it like perfectly, like the album. I was like, man, that's amazing. It's a sign like, how of do you say musician no? right there. That's it. Yeah. And that's that's what it boils down to. Um you guys uh, in the time that I've known you, um, you've always been very brutally honest um, about whatever's going on. You wear your heart on your sleeve a lot, it seems. Um, how important is that relationship with the fans back and forth? I think it's what sets us apart from other bands. You know, we interact with everybody that wants to interact with us. We don't turn anyone down. You want to chat? I'll chat with you. And if I got time, you hit me on the Facebook. I. Everyone knows if I've got time, I'll chat with you as long as you want. You know. Uh, you know, and, and we're all the same way. You know, we're, we're all in touch with a lot of, a lot of our, uh, you know, fans. It, it's weird to call them fans because we're friends with like so many, so many people that come to the shows. You know, and it, it's maybe sets us apart from other bands. We've got that relationship with people. And we're honest, super honest with them about how we do things and how we, how we're feeling about what we're doing. Sometimes it sucks, and you question why you're doing it. And we're vocal about that. You know, and I think it translates uh, to a really loyal fan base. You know. And I mean, these, show, these shows have been a great indication. People who, you know, have been coming to see us for 10, 11 years, still coming out 10, 11 years later. Mm -hmm. you know, they were 15 when they started coming out, you know? Like yeah. he said, like, now, like, the fans that started being with us are not, they're not fans anymore, they're friends. Right. And even, like, if they, they come to Montreal, they're like, they message us, like, dude, yeah, we, we put have them a place, in our place, place yeah. to stay. Like, you can stay with us, like, you right. know? So, and it's a lot, it's the same thing. Like, now that, like, we're not gonna tour, we're, but, like, I'm gonna come to Hamilton, see some friends, I'm gonna go to Ajax, I'm gonna go to Calgary. Right. Like, I have, like, good friends now over there, yeah. just because I played there. Right. And that's how it is, like, that's That's it, and it's, like, it's a give and take, like, there's not a lot of bands that would be, like, if they would literally invite their, their fans to stay on their couch, you know? Come to our city, we'll party with you, we'll put mm -hmm. you up, we'll feed you. You know, we've done it, we've all done it, you know? The friends, you know, traveling through or touring through, we're always there for them the way they've been there for us, and I think, that maybe sets us apart from a lot of other bands. Right on. Yeah, uh, I'll never forget when I met, again, going back to Metal Fest. The first time I ever met you guys, I'd seen videos before and I'm like, fuck, these guys are like rock stars. Am I going to be able to sit down and shoot the shit with them? And then Miller shows up, parks up, pulls a, parks up with a beer. We said, I don't know, fuck, almost three hours we sat there and shot this shit. At least, you know, uh, from everything from Christ. Murder to masturbation, I think. Sounds like yeah. a Ryan Miller conversation. Yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, and then, Tattoo and then, shop. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Tattoo shops. Yeah. yeah. You and Frenchie uh, used to work in the, under the same names. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
and then James showed up, and you all, all you guys showed up, and you made everybody feel at home. Uh, and, and that's a, that's something I think that a lot of bands lack. There seems to be a lot of a lot of ego. That's no room for that shit, man. No, no, absolutely. I I think it just distracts from what you're what the true real purpose of what yeah. you're trying to do is. Well, that's it. And I think you know, as we've we've gotten older, we've been playing. You know, we've gotten to play with like, like I was saying, like a lot of our you know our heroes as kids. We played with a lot of those bands. And you meet them and you realize like they're just dudes like us. Human. You know what I mean? They're fallible, you know. It's like it's hard not to feel like, you know, like a fanboy when you're talking to Chuck Billy from Testament. Yeah. You know, but like he's just another fucking dude who's been doing what we've been doing but just way longer. You know what I mean? And you know, so he's in a different place with his career, but like, you know, he's fucking just a dude who just knew it longer than us, you know? And it's like fuck you know, why would you act like a rock star when you realize that, like all your heroes are just Dudes too, you know what I mean? Right. So if you want to just be down, as down to earth as possible. I think that attitude gets lost in the translation a lot. Um, so, when you guys would sit, you'd say, okay, we're going to write a new record, it's time. Musically, lyrically, where would the influences come from? Um, from anywhere, films, everyday life, uh, anything, whatever the case may be. Pretty much, yeah, like everything. It just it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. All, like the lyrics, all it's all James. But I mean, I think with everything you, you wrote, it's always like you just come up. Like, yeah, it could be something. It literally could be something in the news about something, stuff like that. Stuff that I'm feeling, stuff that we've gone through as a band together. You know, whatever is like made me feel any kind of strong emotion, we're gonna write about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool too, cause like James writes all the lyrics. Uh, He's always written all the lyrics, but it, what's cool about it is, even if like there's a topic that I'm into, I could like sit down and talk to James about it and be like, you know, like it'd be cool if we wrote a song about this. Like he'll do his homework and like he'll he'll write a song about what you want to talk about. You know, like it's it, it's really cool because like I have I'm, I'm no lyricist by any stretch, <laughs> right? But like it's cool that I can still have an input, and James will take the time to learn about what what I'm interested in and write something about it too. And similarly, I mean? like as a, as a vocalist, like luckiest vocalist in the world, that like I I've been playing with a band that like will listen to what I have to say. I don't play guitar, but like if I've got input on the song structure or the way riff is going, like they'll genuinely sit down and listen to what I have to say. And, you know, take my two cents into consideration. I mean, that's not something a lot of vocalists have. <laughs> not a luxury a lot of vocalists have. And I've, I've been blessed with that, you know, playing with these guys for the past several years. You know? That's awesome. Like, you guys, just, you don't fuck around about it. You're one big happy family and everybody's got a say. Yeah. It doesn't seem like there's any dysfunctional family nonsense that goes on. Everything is sewed on the table and that's the way it stays. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Um, so, Everybody knows that an unsigned Canadian musical metal band, um, it's not the easiest way to make a living. Um, so, I'm not call that a fact. Living. <laughs> it's no way to make a living. Yeah. Well, it's it's a go. great way to live below the poverty <laughs> line. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to be poor, this is the best way to be poor. Absolutely. It's the Absolutely. fucking best way to be poor. It's yeah. the, the only way you can, you can think about it. It's like we're, we're poor as fuck, but we have the best time, man. For a bunch of poor dudes, we've, we've done some really cool fucking shit. Fucking you know, right, yeah, that traveled bitch. a bunch and, you know, got to meet a lot of really cool people and have a good time, you know. It's the best, the best poverty lifestyle you can live. <laughs> Living on craft dinner and hot dogs. Yeah. Chef Boy RD. See? <laughs> <laughs> Never again. Do you have the kettle in the van, James? Oh, not tonight. But no? We, we, we're living luxury. I got a hotel room we were last night. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, you're going all out for these last ones. But yeah, man, we, man, you tour the kettle all the time. Oatmeal. I'll soup, never forget it. Soup, tea, instant coffee. <laughs> um, so, that being said, uh, <laughs> Miller, behave yourself. You can't take the guy nowhere. Nope. Um, <laughs> no. 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 Yeah. So, what do you guys do uh, between tours for for jobs? Uh, you know, do you work or do you just stay true to the starving artist lifestyle, as it were? Yeah. Pepe sucks dicks. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Ryan, well, Ryan, I was going to do that. I was going to say, I find 
him the dicks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm your dick butler. He lines the dicks. What street is he working on, St. Catherine? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, it's just. Not anymore. <laughs> that so place, it's a male that prostitution place is ring. Yeah. That place is <laughs> this band is just a front for male prostitution. Well, then we'll talk later. I got some work in the falls for you. <laughs> <laughs> Niagara Falls male prostitutes. I got your back, Jack. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask, I've seen a lot of posts on Facebook lately about uh, Nowhere Fast. Yeah. Uh, is this a whole end ass thing or is this uh, a middle no, thing? Uh, my buddy Josh uh, Weaker, he is a uh, filmmaker and he just came up with an idea one day and just made this film. Um, he uh, approached myself and James and asked if we wanted to do a role uh, as being part of the the gang in the in the movie, which is about a uh, uh, a biker gang, but it's a stationary bike gang. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a classic You're story. It so seriously, yeah, yeah, gotta, yeah, yeah. You know, we gotta <laughs> defend our turf and you know you know our honor and whatnot. And we uh, are fighting the. Uh, the new the gang in town, gang, yeah. the rival, the rival party, yeah. So, but no, it is. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Good, a lot of fun. Yeah. What's the gang called? Sons of Stationery. <laughs> Static Fury. Static Fury. <laughs> See? Yeah. Well, you just made me look like a punk with my name now. Thanks, Miller. <laughs> yeah. You got my back. Your son's <laughs> <was good. laughs> Sons of Stationery. Sons of Stationery is pretty fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could get a you could get a whole backpack made up with it. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, see, yeah. it'll just be Miller on a stationary bike pedal in his ass off. Yeah, definitely not me on a stationary bike pedal in his ass. No, that's what it is now. See, yeah. you, just, you just ruined that for yourself. You gotta do exercise now. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> get, fuck the, that. get the lip sweat going on the fun sons of stationery. <laughs> yes, the lip sweat. Yeah. Then a, a fun fact, when we started filming for that, the director took Miller aside. He's like, is James gonna be okay? <laughs> <laughs> like when he, I don't think he banked on how fat I actually was, you know? <laughs> like we got there and I was like, He's Whoa. like, fuck. <laughs> you got wind is going up the stairs, is it gonna be okay? I'm like, Fine. And you know what? I fucking own that shit. I fucking pedaled my ass off yeah. for that fucking movie. We got We got a guy walking around spritzing our faces with water to make it look like we're sweating heavy and they just walk right by James. <laughs> they walk right by yeah. James, sweat dripping off the tip of his nose. The only guy to on this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Look, know, it was a lot of fun, though, man. Yeah. A lot, a lot of fun. Awesome fights. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So, I have one last question. This is this is the big one for, for me. Um, after everything we've just talked about, looking back at the last 11 years, um, why why now? Why why decide to call it a day and wrap it up with end asked now? Well, it's a huge question. Yeah, yeah. Monster question. Yeah. yeah there's, there's a lot of reasons. There's no there's no one answer really. Like everybody had their own reasons, except for me and Steve. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean honestly, it was just we reached a point. Well, like I said, we kind of hit a bit of a ceiling, I think. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the past two years, we kind of, like, didn't really see as much growth as we had seen in previous years. And I think we all kind of just ran out of steam, you know. And that's the, sh the short answer, the very short answer. I mean, everybody has personal reasons as well. But, uh, I mean, it's such an amicable way to close things off, you know what I mean? Like, we're all just so, we still love each other so much and, like, care about each other so much. And, and this is, these are people I'm going to be friends with the rest of my life. Stuck with me no matter what, <laughs> being my brother. But I mean, these guys are all stuck with me, you know, and I'm stuck with them. We're, you know, we're family, and it's not that's never going to change. And you know, we're ending it on as high note as you can possibly. Yeah, for sure. Well, guys, it has been an absolute honor to sit here and smoke cigars and shoot the shit with you. Um, thanks so much for doing it. Thank you, guys. Once again, mighty end asked. Sofa City Sounds. Guys, get up off your asses, go to a show, buy a shirt, support live local music. Thanks very much. Okay, all right.